Welcome to the second in a series of mini-lectures about geosynthetics. We aim to assist students in civil engineering and geotechnical engineers in understanding more about geosynthetics, which have emerged as a common solution in civil engineering products over the past 50 years. With a basic understanding of geosynthetics, engineers are better placed to understand the applications, functions, design considerations and the various geosynthetic product categories. This program was funded by the International Fibre Centre and developed by the Monash Geomechanics Group at Monash University in conjunction with the Technical Textiles and Non-Wovens Association. The program consists of seven mini-lectures, moving from an introductory discussion through an intermediate stage, where we examine common civil engineering structures before focusing on some common functions and applications. This topic is the intermediate discussion and has been developed for third-year undergraduate civil engineers. In this unit, we look at typical engineering structures and explore how geosynthetics are used to address common design problems. As a practicing civil engineer, there are a number of common structures that you will come across during your career. Today we look at these structures and where geosynthetics are used to enhance the design or construction process. The six structures we will look at are road formation and pavement, embankments, waste containment, retaining walls, drainage channels, beach protection. Previously we introduced four common categories of civil engineering works. Engineering construction, including roads, railways, tunnels, bridges, port facilities, etc. Mining, including tailings dams, water, wastewater infrastructure, mine rehabilitation, transport infrastructure, dump walls, rockfall control. Environmental, including landfill, waste containment, erosion control, coastal protection, landscaping. Building, including basement waterproofing, water harvesting, site drainage, retaining walls, landscape integration. Many engineering structures can be found across these four application areas. In our discussion of geosynthetics, we will choose just a few of the most common structure types to explore in detail. To help guide us through the discussion today, we will be using this schematic. It shows the six common structures and how geosynthetics are used in each. The first structure we look at is the road formation and pavement. We drive on roads every day, but few people understand the engineering required for modern road construction. This image shows geosynthetics being used for separation, reinforcement and drainage functions. A typical road formation structure will have various components where geosynthetics can play an important role. Here is a typical cross section of a road. It shows the subbase and pavement as well as the drainage system. Highways are designed to achieve a hundred years working. All the components of the road formation must contribute and interact to achieve this goal. The first step in road creation is excavation. A geosynthetic layer is then used to separate existing in situ material and the imported road base. The geosynthetic material most often used for this purpose is a geotextile. A non-woven geotextile is generally rolled out at the bottom of a road excavation. Here we see aggregate being placed on top of a non-woven geotextile which is lining the road excavation. The aggregate provides stability as well as drainage. Highways with multiple lanes are very wide structures. Sometimes adjacent rolls of geotextiles must be used. If so, it is important that they overlap. 
road authorities generally specify the required overlap. The grade of geotextile chosen will generally be directed by road authority specifications. For example, a multi-lane highway with heavy vehicle loads on soft soils will require a different grade of geotextile to a single-lane secondary road on firm soil. As aggregate layers are placed to create the road formation, geosynthetic reinforcement layers can be used to reduce the thickness of aggregate layers required and or increase the strength and performance of the road and the materials that best address this function are geogrids. Geogrids provide a stronger and more stable structure by interlocking with the aggregate material. Like geotextiles, this product is also supplied in rolls. Here we see aggregate being placed on top of a geogrid in a highway. The design and grade of geogrid selected needs to address the type of aggregate rock being used, vehicle loads, construction forces and strength of underlying soil. Software is available to assist engineers with this design task. You can see that the geogrids used in roads have strength in two directions. These are called biaxial geogrids and are different to the geogrids used in retaining walls. Junction strength is critical. It must be able to withstand extreme forces during construction. Another product used at the base of a road for reinforcement is a geocell. These are panels, not rolls generally used in unsealed areas such as forestry and beach access tracts. They are thicker than geogrids, generally in excess of 100 millimeters. They strengthen the soil by confining it within its apertures. Most roads will have an asphalt, wearing course. The more water that seeps through this layer and into the road formation, the more quickly this structure degrades. Geosynthetics can be used in the asphalt layer to reduce the ingress of water and extend the life of the road. The geosynthetic materials used for this purpose include geotextiles and geogrids. The surface of the road needs to resist the wear and tear of traffic movements over a long period of time. Geotextiles or geogrids are often used to provide a more durable surface. By this, we mean the roads do not need to be resurfaced and maintained so frequently. Here we see a geotextile being used as a paving fabric in an asphalt road. You can see the tack layer on the road surface. This is a sticky layer that holds the geotextile in place. An installation frame is used to place the geotextile. This ensures that the fabric sticks to the road. Once in place, the fabric is rolled to ensure no folds or creases exist, especially around curves. The final step is to spray another layer of asphalt on top of the geotextile as the ultimate wearing course. Without the geotextile, the surface is more inclined to crack and allow water to enter and degrade the road formation. In urban areas, resurfacing of roads sometimes has to occur at night for traffic safety. Generally, this occurs in summer months to ensure the asphalt remains hot enough during placement. Drainage is a critical part of road design. Typically, an engineer must consider drainage of the subsurface and the roadside. Subsurface drainage keeps groundwater away from the road formation by directing it to the roadside drainage system. Rainfall on the road surface simply runs off and into the roadside drain.